So uh, without uh, further ado, we're going to move uh, to our next uh, presentation, which uh, will be covering the greenhouse gas and reporting. Uh, we are going to touch on the topics of what are the expectations in this space? What is the direction? What can we do in the open footprint to assist? And what links do we have? Uh, Sumuli uh, Budachari is going to be presenting. And a little bit about Sumuli, he is a partner in digital services at ERM. He has more than 17 years of experience working on business and digital transformations, supply chain transformation, and sustainability. So, Samuli, I'm going to turn it over to you. Thank you, Heidi. Thanks for that. And uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of you. I hope that covers everyone, whichever side of the international deadline you are. So well, this is actually quite quite sunny and bright in London. Surprise of surprises. So uh, and and it has been a wonderful uh, few sessions. I think you, you probably at this point in time uh, are looking at you know some of the content that we are trying to well some of the challenges we are trying to address and some of the contents we are putting together. Uh, so. I think what I will do is I'll try to so let's let me just uh, add to what Heidi just said. So, uh, of course, reporting and as uh, Anna mentioned uh, and 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 Gomar also touched upon earlier. I mean, reporting is a challenge, right? So, reporting is a challenge, and I'll go through the some of the those challenges uh, in in my presentation. So let's let's uh, again take a step back, and I know we have touched upon this subject earlier. So why an organization, and I'm talking about primarily commercial organizations here, why they would be interested in reporting. Of course, there is a you know, doing good part of this, which is well, we need to go contribute to the emission, emission redu reduction, right? Everybody has to do that. And of course, the, the commercial organizations have to do their part to achieve 1.5 degree target, et cetera. But I think there are more fundamental business reasons to do that. Uh, for example, the pressure is already building in the system and building for some time. But if you look at last one and a half years, probably it reached a point that it is almost becoming the central agenda, the, the mainstay. And all you need to do is, if, if you switch on your or, uh, TV or, or wherever you consume your, your news, if you look at that, Although we are in the middle of the pandemic, the, I think the second most important topic uh, that everybody is talking about is the, the, the sustainability, and particularly the COP21 coming up. I think this whole pressure from the civil society is not actually percolating through governments. Governments are owning, and, and different regulators are, are also you know, getting, getting, I would say, much more bolder with the sustainability targets, right? So that pressure is building. What does it mean for an organization, a commercial organization? So that actually means that ultimately they need to go back to their investors and show them that they have a path uh, which is essentially going to lead to a sustainable business model. So that's an important one, right? Uh, of course, I, I already mentioned the regulators and, uh, and and the governments. They are definitely looking at that uh, with with pretty increased vigor, increased sense of purpose, uh, and of course the, the, the wider stakeholders within 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 that uh, ecosystem, if you like. Now, but the, I think that what is the game changer primarily is also the, the pressure from the customers. So. I think customers are much more aware. They want to make a sustainable and ethical choice in the products or services they buy. Uh, so, so they definitely that's probably one of the you know, biggest driver, a biggest pressure, if you like, on the organizations. But equally uh, for suppliers as well, right? So, for example, if any organization is actually thought to be relatively, you know, blind in sustainability, I think a lot of you know big suppliers don't want to associate them with, with an organization like that. So uh, the next one is an interesting one, and I was actually in another session a couple of days back, and uh, the, the conversation was around 
uh, at a sustainable workplace and also how to retain talent, right? Given the, the almost the life defining uh, event that we are all going through. And one of the things that came up that attractability of an, of an employer or organization uh, probably in some ways is, is quite you know, reliant on, on, the, on the image of the employer. And previously it used to be the, the diversity, inclusiveness and all of that. But now increasingly sustainability is becoming another item. So how green my company is or my prospective employer is, is becoming a, a mainstay of that conversation. And of course, if you, if you but aggregate all of that, I think that culminates into what is essentially the social purpose, right? And, and that social purpose needs to be well communicated to the civil society. One of the best way of communicating is putting some hard facts, uh, i.e. you can report on how you're doing rather than making you know, overall uh, statements. You can actually substantiate that with some data, some, some evidence. So I think that is what is driving reporting in this space. Uh, so, and, and of course, I mean, on the right hand side, uh, I've just used the same in infographics that we use very often, I think, on the on, on scope one, scope two, scope three reporting. So, but when I'm talking about sustainability and we are talking about just greenhouse gas here, of course, it is part of the overall sustainability reporting. I think the completeness of reporting is what is probably the, the biggest challenge and, 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 and also the ambition that uh, in general, the organized users are grappling with. Okay, if you can move to the next slide, please. So what uh, I tried to do with a very simple infographic of what is the reporting ecosystem looks like. Right? So who are, the, who are the actors, who are the players here? So on the left hand side, so this is actually what I call the, the, the blue arrows, I call the consumption flow. So of course there is uh, in, in the middle, you have a, a, a company or organization and in, uh, for the context of this, we're saying the reporting company who is actually uh, producing the disclosure. But then of course you have within that supply chain, the suppliers, uh, and, and they have, of course, uh, the, the, they have their, some uh, GHG footprint because of their operations as, as the reporting company do. But equally, of course, the, uh, and the other side of it is, is their customers, right? And, and there is a, a, a GIG footprint there as well. And, and I think this came up earlier in the conversation, and that includes uh, use of the product, right? So, for example, uh, I think car is always a good example. So, if you, if you, if you are having a car, of course, at, at every time, and particularly if it's a, it's a fossil fuel driven car, you're using, you're, you're having a footprint. But equally, so if I'm, I'm, I'm a consumer, but I'm actually buying this to produce something else. So there is a footprint of that as well. And most importantly, things like packaging and end of life. And end of life is actually one of the more challenging ones because unless you have, uh, wherever this is consumed, uh, a, a, I would say a very well-defined way method of disposal. I think that is quite difficult to accurately estimate and report on, or measure and report on, I would rather use. And, uh, and I also I think there, there are other, other uh, concepts that are involved in here, which is essentially, you know, what is the circular economy element of it? What is, is there an upcycling element of it? So all of those uh, ultimately need to be reported on, on. So if you look at this, all these elements, essentially we are talking about the scope one, scope two and scope three. And as we know, the scope three is probably the biggest challenge because they are, a more diverse, uh, the, where the, the footprint is generated is much more wider, and and al also the the control of information and data is much more difficult. Uh, hence, I mean that that is the challenge. So in some ways, even though scope one, scope two, it, in some it is thought to be easier to dealt with, but ultimately the total footprint is not uh, not that accurate, right? So I. Uh, the uncertainty, as it is called, is actually uh, quite significant depending on the industry set in the, and, and the operations that you have. So on the right side, so of course, this is the, as I mentioned, this is the operating company that is generating the disclosure. On the right side, who are the other players in the ecosystem? So the, the green arrows actually defines where the 
information or the disclosure is, is produced and who consumes it. And the one that we, with, with the gray arrows actually shows who are in the ecosystem contributing to that. Of course, we have the standards and frameworks, and there are many. Uh, so uh, SASB, GRI, ISO, TCFG, et cetera. And, and by the way, there, there are many standards. But there's a reason for that, right? Uh, I'm sure some of you know that SASB, uh, it was primarily uh, the, the disclosure was targeted at the, at the financial community, if you like. On, on the contrary, GRI is uh, is more focused on the operational aspects of an organization. And we have ISO and TCFD, so on and so forth. But we also have likes of WBSCSD, WRI, et cetera, who are, uh, they, they're involved in produ uh, producing standard. For example, in the 1990s, WRI and WBSCSD came together to, to champion and lead the, uh, what is GHG protocol? Probably by far the most, or certainly one of the most comprehensive method of calculating your GHG footprint. But there are also CDP who are actually based on the actual disclosure, collecting the data, etc. So they together make the standards and frameworks ecosystem. And uh, I'll, I'll come to this point later in this in this uh, session that actually there is a concerted effort of these organizations coming together, right? And and that's probably one of the one of the challenges that we have today they're trying to address. You also have what I call enablers, and these enablers are, uh, for example, so solution providers, and think about the commercial software companies who, uh, who actually enable the organizations to, uh, to you know, calculate and, and, and producing some sort of disclosure, right? And there are many. Uh, there are also the data service providers, and why do you need them? Uh, because, as I mentioned, that if you look at the entire supply chain, what the this uh, what the carbon footprint uh, uh, data is produced, that's that's not uniform, right? And particularly in any modern diverse supply chain, if you look at that, and that means a lot of data which needs to be brought in into one place in order to a report on calculate on and and etc and now i think this is where and i will talk about that in a moment world is moving to previously what used to be more of an estimated data is become is becoming more of a measured data because nowadays the availability and the connectivity of a lot of what we call edge devices they're increasing right so that's an important aspect you of course have the auditors who are going to verify that what is being reported are, are, are accurate, but also you have data aggreg aggregators, right? Who, and the data aggregators would play an important role because even with the best of intentions, not everything would, would essentially be measured. So you need the data aggregators to play that role as well. And the, and the last part of the ecosystem, but, but uh, probably the most important ones are what I call the consumers of the disclosures of the information, right? I already mentioned about the regulators who are looking at it with an increased vigor, governments, most importantly, customers. And this is where some of the conversations we had earlier about the, the, the product uh, emission reporting or the product footprint is quite important. And, and uh, last but not the least is the civil society and the media, right? Uh, in many ways, I think, the conversations have become much more fact-based, and you, you could probably see that in many ways. Every now and then, you you get these uh, stories in the media, which are talking about okay, this was the the stated objective of the organization. What what is the actuals? So I think they are the one, one of, they are the some of the primary consumers of this disclosure information. There are many more, but those are the main ones that I've identified. Okay. Uh, can you move on to the next slide, please? Okay, so what are the expectations, right? So what are the principles, golden standard for the GHG accounting and reporting? Now, the ones that we are looking at, actually, these are uh, some of the, these are actually the parameters that are identified as part of the GHG protocol. And if you look at that, you probably see that uh, many of them are what you uh, you'd probably assume to, to find in a financial disclosure. And the reason for that is uh, originally a lot of the purpose of disclosure of sustainability was led by 
some of the key principles of the financial reporting as well. Okay. And some of them are also quite similar to what you call a good data standard. Right? I would not go to them individually yet. Rather than that, I think what would be useful is just to uh, you know, test, uh, do, do a bit of polling and, and, and get an idea of, of your view of this. Uh, can I move to the next slide, please? So uh, let's run a very quick poll. So out of this, which of the following GHG accounting and reporting principles is underpinned by auditability? Uh, so I, th I think you could you could just you know, quickly uh, make a choice and we would you just show the results of that. So it's, it's in, interestingly, uh, okay, I'm just looking at the answers. Uh, so, well, again, as I said, probably there, there is a, a different ways of, of interpreting the question, but according to the GAG protocol, uh, it is actually the transparency. And I do think out of, I think we, we have got a good representation of those, those answers. Yeah. Thank you for that. Okay, so actually we have, uh, but yeah, I think probably John, we, we might need to keep it open for a bit longer because I, I could see that a lot of uh, the, the participants could not actually respond. So if you can just keep it a bit longer, please. Okay. Yeah, I can't actually, I can't reopen that poll now it's closed uh, similarly, but I think probably the people didn't answer because they, um, they didn't want to answer, maybe because based upon not having enough information or not determining what to answer. So. Um, I suggest we just move on to the next poll and I give them no, a Absolutely, answer. absolutely. So that's what I suggest is let's move on to the poll two. So the question is, which of the following GH accounting and reporting principle is impacted most by uncertainty? And by uncertainty, we mean uncertainty in the context of uh, GIG emission measurement and reporting. Actually, actually, this one, every almost the majority of the respondents got it right. So yes, it is. It is actually accuracy, uh, which which probably well. Having said that, this is probably impacts others as well. But accuracy is the the criteria that is impacted most. So, if if you move on to the next one, please. Uh, so we we are looking at some of the challenges, right? And this some of these challenges have actually have already been discussed earlier. So. Uh, first is lack of complete and high quality direct across supply chain, and when you. Uh, and usually, I mean, the, the example that is always given is, is typically think of, of a car, right? It probably have 1000 plus parts and out, out of which probably more than 50% is coming from different suppliers. So in order to have an, an accurate carbon footprint, you need to have data from all of the suppliers, right? So, so that's, of course, one of the biggest challenge as we, as we already uh, discussed earlier. But also, even though you might actually have the information, one the other challenge is if you do not have a common way of exchanging that data, you don't have a common data standard uh, across industry and supply chain. So that will also impact, right? So, and uh, what I did is I just looked at all of those challenges, and of course, they impact all the five parameters we discussed earlier. But the one that are impacted most are these. We also have, uh, and this is probably a challenge relatively, relatively, I would say, easily solvable, and, and we can see a lot of movement happening there, which is there are multiple reporting standards and regulations which require variable information. There is, of course, an overlap, but there are also quite a bit of uh, difference between them as well. Right? So, and, and that, of, of course, impacts the consistency, relevance, and accuracy of reporting. Um, and finally, uh, I think the elephant in the room, we discussed this already, which is uh, accounting of emissions for products. And, and, and to, to the earlier point, it not just cradle to gate, but also cradle to gate uh, to grave as well. Right? So, so those are the, the impacts of the challenges on the, on the measurement and the reporting of, of GHG footprint. So if we, if we just get to the next one, the next slide, please. So if this is the last poll. I promise you that. And um, this is a, this is a multiple choice. So which of the following challenges manifest in the scope three puzzle? We are discussing about scope three earlier, and I think we we can probably give just thirty seconds on this. Um, close the poll. Okay. 
Yeah, I think uh, the, the response is, is exactly uh, what what was expected. So I think that the spread is pretty even, but definitely the, the, the lack of a complete and high quality data across supply chain is coming out as, as the biggest challenge. And, and that's, that's perfectly in line of the expectation in the wider conversation we're having. Okay, can you move on to the next uh, slide, please? Really, really quickly. So what is the direction? What are the mega trends? I mentioned some of them earlier. So there is a higher emphasis on measured data. So move away from assumed or calcul calculated data. There'd be, of course, some calculation and a lot of uh, what happens in the OFP is that. But when we say calculated data, we actually mean whatever can be measured should be measured. Okay, uh, and, and you have the sensor technologies and and uh, you know connectivity with meters are improving all the time. So that's definitely uh, a, a direction of travel that we see. Uh, the next is emphasis on the accuracy of across supply chain. So, i.e., that means neither under or over reporting. So, i.e., re reduce the uncertainty. Reporting standards and frameworks are coming together. So, IRC and SASB only re uh, they have just completed their merger, but also uh, SASB, IRC, uh, ISO, uh, GRI, uh, etc. They are trying to come together. They actually already put an intent. Uh, a statement of intent last year to saying that they want to come together and have more overlap between the two standards. Eventually, I think the way I see is the way accounting standard came together to essentially have two big standards like you know uh, GAP and IFRS. That is going to happen in this space as well. Uh, extend, extend deployment and use of digital solutions to capture data and generate insight to my earlier point. And we are seeing this trend is actually happening. People actually investing in, in, in technologies to make a difference. And finally, the reliable source of past and current data, because ultimately, if you think of this as a continuum of essentially you, you measure, you, you calculate, you set target, measure again and report on that. So essentially, the, the consistency between the past and current data is actually becoming much more important and driven primarily by the societal regulatory and legal pressure. Can you move to the next one, please? So what is OFP can do to assist? I, I would not actually spend much time on that because we actually, we have covered some of this already, but important bit is that we have engaged some of the biggest you know, industrial uh, organizations, technology uh, organizations and the sustainability organization. It's almost like uh, the, the best mix of things that you can get. By no way, I would say it's complete, we need more. And that's probably one call to action. Please get engaged, get you engaged. Uh, and, and bring your organization to the table so we can we can have a, you know a much more robust uh, uh, inform framework and, and 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 templates to to deploy to. We are also focusing on the standardization, uh, but accessibility is an important one. I think Umar mentioned in his presentation about API etc. I.e., we want to make it an open standard that people can easily easily uh, deploy or, or access to. And finally, of course, we are collaborating uh, with the standards and frameworks like WBCSD that you have, you have uh, seen earlier. So, of course, there are more to do. So, the last question is what you think we can do more, what you can do more as, as OFP. So, we would like to have your response on that. And moving on, the final slide. I will not, uh, again, spend anything on that. I probably, if there is any question, I will take it at that point. But these are some of the relationship of collaborations that we are having. As you can see, uh, these are only the few that we are actually engaged or having conversation with, but there are much more who we are also engaging with. So that's where we are. Uh, any any question? Uh, then I'd like to quickly answer that. Sorry, I just uh, unmuting myself there. I don't see any questions on the on the on the chat window. Um, Shamoli, just maybe a question for myself. If you look at those those five those 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 five topics that you had, the accuracy, the uncertainty, the transparency. I mean, where where do companies prioritize, right? I mean, if you, do you do you do you try to tackle all five at once? Where where do you if where do you best focus your time? Thanks, Sammy. So at this point, I mean, of course, transparency has has been uh, a focus for some time, right? Uh, uh, and and uh, and then consistency as well, because in in many ways, from year to year, how you report and what you report has been a focus for some time.
But I think accuracy is probably where we see much more emphasis nowadays, right? So, and, and whether that's accurately measuring scope three, uh, but also across the supply chain, for example, GHG uh, gives you the option of either having supplier specific data in your supply chain, or you can also go to average best method, meaning where it's not available, you can go and get some research data and industry average. Uh, so I think that's where it is moving to. So I think their focus is more go, get close to the data where it is produced, for example, in this case, supplier specific data. And, and yes, I, th I think that's where the, the focus is going to be, I think, more and more getting to the granularity of data, getting close to the data where it's produced, and more importantly, getting an accurate footprint as opposed to a measure or estimated footprint. Cool, thanks. Okay, there's still no, uh, there's, a, there's one question coming in now, I believe. Even more than one. Yeah, I think I think there is a question coming in yeah. that I, I said, said, but like, we cannot see it actually. I think. Yeah, I can I can read it out. Um, um, there are yeah. actually a couple of questions I see now. So, what what additional organizations, reporting agencies, companies, and with big audacious sustainability goals would you like to recruit into the OFP conversation? So absolutely, I think probably uh, this is this is something almost I mean to my call to action. So A is we need much wider industry representation. So so please please get involved. We can never have much of those because uh, the, the reason I say this is in the accuracy. The more input we have from a broad industry uh, sectors. And, and that also means that many of your suppliers, if you can also encourage them to participate, then we would get to the point of, as I mentioned, measuring the data what is produced uh, in, in a better way. So definitely that's uh, that's one, but also what you'd say is by adopting uh, the standard that OFP is trying to put together, the framework template, or if we call it, but because we are working with all of the, you know, main, I would say all, almost all of the main uh, reporting or, or, or disclosure standards organization. So, so by the adoption, we can also drive standardization, which improves accuracy. Is there any other questions, Sami? Yes, no, uh, no. Sure. Yeah, well, there's one more. Uh, uh, as accuracy is the main issue, and this is from Bupinder, um, as, as, as accuracy is the main issue, how can we improve it? Uh, so I think it's a, I would say it's a step by step approach. It's, it's a call walk run. So if we think that we are going to get 100% accuracy uh, over over a year, I don't think that's going to happen. So in some ways, it is the way you dissect the problem. Problem is where is your biggest bottleneck is? Do I believe that there would be no uncertainty ever? No, I don't because I think there would always be. And but I think one of the ways, and and this is just one. There are many ways to do that, but. One of the ways of looking at improving accuracy is looking at the materiality of data. So, i.e., if you have uncertainty or inaccuracy in your in your footprint, you just you know uh, almost uh, break them down and look at which of that is actually materially impacting your accuracy. So, address that first, as opposed to spending a lot of time in trying to address an accuracy which is probably giving you added uh, or reducing inaccuracy by. Two percent or two percent. So, look at the materiality and try to address those. That would probably be one of the golden principle of improving accuracy. I hope that answers yeah. the question. Yeah, I think so. And just just to chime in, and and maybe Heidi will will, will wrap this up because I'm conscious we're we're eating into Sarab's time here. So, um, but just to just to maybe chime one additional thought, uh, Shmuley, to it is also, I think there's a level of pace and ambition that organizations need to have. I mean, is much as we like to get into real time reporting and satellite imagery and all that cool fancy digital stuff, uh, I mean, there's still many organizations in the world that are happy just to go from annual reporting to monthly reporting or quarterly reporting. So, you know, I think it's a journey that every organization is on. And, and I think that's that's part of the the accuracy question is just being able to get more granular with your data, whether it is moving to real time. Um, or just even more frequent, just by having that level of, of, of granularity and moving into measurement, I think will also then help as well um, in terms of improving the accuracy. So, good. Yeah, yeah. completely agree. And accuracy, I wouldn't say a marathon, that probably would be slightly, 
you know, losing the purpose, but it is probably a middle distance running. It's not a sprint. So yeah, okay. it can improve overlaps. Thank you. Good. Excellent. Thanks, Shamali. Heidi, I think we're out of questions. So back okay. over to you, I think. All right, thank you, Sammy. Thank, thank you, Simuli. That was uh, extremely informative and well thought out and, and well done. Thank you.